Hello, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks and in this video I'm going to show you what is the basic structure of a Solidity smart contract. By the way, I created a free email course to teach you how I got my first remote blockchain job paid $100,000 a year. So if you want to learn all my secrets, you just have to sign up at this URL. So what you see on my screen is the Remix Online IDE for Solidity. So you can access it by going to this URL. And if you haven't followed my previous video, I actually give a brief introduction of what is Remix. And so the first thing we need to do is to click on the Solidity button here. So it's going to configure Remix for the Solidity programming language. So let's do this. And you should see this. And we're going to create a new smart contract. So I'm going to click on the menu for the file explorer here. So let me click on that. And then I'm going to click on the plus icon to create a new file. And I'm going to create my call my file my contract.sol. So dot sol is the extension for Solidity Smart Contract. So I press OK. And here on the right, then you should see the source code of your smart contract. So since we, we have just started, this is empty, of course, but we are going to fill it. So the first thing we need to do is to put the pragma statement of Solidity. So the pragma statement basically tells the compiler that we want this smart contract to be compiled with a certain version of Solidity. So this prevents you from making some mistake. For example, if you write a smart contract in a certain version of Solidity, but then you try to compile it with an in incompatible version, then Solidity will know that there is a problem. So you specify the pragma statement like this. So pragma solidity and then caret plus the name of the, the version number. So we're going to be using solidity 0.5.11 and you terminate by a semicolon because in solidity all the statement needs to be terminated, terminated that way. So there is one thing in its pragma statement that is a bit confusing. This is this little caret thing. So what does this mean? So this means that only the compatible version of Solidity will be used to compile this smart contract. So that means, for example, Solidity 0.5.11, of course, but also Solidity 0.5.12, etc., etc. But the middle version here, the middle number five, this cannot be different. So if you try to compile this with, for example, 0.6.0, this will not work. If you try to compile this um, with uh, 0.4.0, uh, it will not work. 0.5.10 will also not work, but 0.5.11 will work, 12, 13, etc. So you got the ID. So in general, you should always start a smart contract with the latest version, a stable version of Solidity. So at the time of this recording, this is 0.5.11. Then after that, you can have some import. So if you, in your smart contract, if you make some reference to other smart contract, then you can have some import statement. Uh, I'm going to show you this uh, later in this tutorial series, but just to tell you briefly, this is possible that you have some import statement here. And after that, you define your smart contract by using the contract keyword. So use the contract keyword and then you name your smart contract. So in general, it's a good practice to name your smart contract with the same name as the file. So in this case, it's going to be my contract. And after that, use curly braces to define the body of your smart contracts. That's where you will actually have all the code of your contract. So in a source file of Solidity, you can actually have several smart contracts. So here I define the first smart contract, but if I want it, I could define another smart contract, my second contract here, etc., etc. I like to keep things tidy, so in general, I like to put just one smart contract per file. Okay, so we have defined our smart contract, so now what's going on in there? So in a smart contract, in the body, you have two locations. The first location, so outside, so at the basic level, this is where you're going to define your variable. So for example, if you want to define an integer, so you define the type 
of the variable like this plus uh, your integers so for example you can call it a so that means that you have a variable of type integer that's going to be stored on the blockchain so this is what we call a state variable and after that so you can define other variable for example u in b etc etc later in this series i will tell you about the different variable types but this is just for the general layout of the contract so we're not going to get into detail into with the solidity types so after that you can define a function a function to manipulate this state variable so define a function exactly like in javascript so function for example you call it uh add and then it's going to add a plus b for example uh so here i'm going to define this function uh this means that it can be called from outside the smart contract and there will be another video on function um and then inside your function uh you can do some uh, some operation uh for example you can return this uh, or do other things um and yeah so this is uh, basically the basics so here outside of your function you define the variable that will be saved on the blockchain and after that you can define some function that manipulates this variable or also some variable that you give as argument to the function so that's really the basics of solidity um, by the way if you look at the contract thing here so it actually kind of look like a JavaScript object because it has some variable and uh, also it has some function. So you can sort of make this comparison. Yes, a smart contract is a little bit like a, a JavaScript object, except that it is connected to the blockchain. That's it for this video. And in the next video, I'm going to give you an overview of all the different variable types that you can use in your Solidity smart contracts.